September 28th, daylight. The monsters have overtaken the city. Somehow, I'm still alive. Resident Evil 3 Remake is beautiful miss potential. It's overall a great entry in the Resident Evil series, but unfortunately the weakest remake by far. It's a solid game with great elements, yet still misses the mark in being a beautiful representation of the beloved 1999 classic Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. There's a lot lacking here for a remake, which is disappointing knowing now out of four remakes, only three are super successful. I might be a bit critical talking about the game, but there are many flaws and or missed opportunities with RE3R. In advance to reviewing the remake, I had to accomplish one task to know what the remake was truly missing. I had to play one game I never played before. Yes, I played through the original classic counterpart itself, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, which is an absolute blast from start to finish. A solid 9 out of 10 that easily best its own remake almost three decades later. I love the experience of exploring Raccoon City while evading if not fighting the iconic infamous bioweapon, the Nemesis. Live selections were a great in addition too. These quick choices could lead to great results and or difficult encounters. The varied encounters are a treat as I replay through experiencing a new moment I never encountered before the first time. Now I could go on about how the original triumphs in a majority of ways, but let's not discredit the remake and give credit where credit's due. I actually think a lot of things about the remake are actually great, especially the characterizations of Jill, Carlos, and other characters, which are just really a vast improvement and amazing. The dodge mechanic is also better to perform here, not feeling as difficult or tricky. The city looks, sounds, and feels livelier than it before for an unfortunate short amount of time though. The hospital is also not a 10 to 15 minute segment to go through having extended the level of exploration. Even the ending fight is better in scale, an improvement compared to the original in those areas. Still, there are flaws in this reimagining to talk about, but I might not go over every single one of them because this will become quite the lengthy video. I'll cover the obvious problems, however do not expect a big and not huge breakdown of every minimal problem or detail there is to this game. This will be a mixed bag of pros and cons, the good and the bad. I like RE3R, I don't dislike it, I don't hate it, although it still could be better. So let's get right into the main event itself as we return to Raccoon City as Jill Valentine makes her last escape. <laughs> The remake of Resident Evil 3 is sometimes better as a one and done experience. The replayability is not the greatest, but rather a decent level of good, if not okay at the very least. So as a starter, let's talk about the gameplay and the few enemies you'll fight in this minimized version of Jill Valentine's fight through RC against the Nemesis. The gameplay is basically Resident Evil 2 Remake with a few new additions. Your Stars Officer Jill Valentine, survivor of the Spencer Mansion incident. Being experienced, Jill has a familiar mechanic from the OG RE3, the dodge mechanic, which is, like stated, better than before in my own opinion. You can actually pull this off as easily as the original itself, which was pretty tricky. It was even tricky for professionals who speedrun the game. When successfully pulled off in Remake, it will actually slow down time, offering you a quick small window to shoot whatever you're dodging, or you can just simply run away to save yourself some bullets in healing items or just a massive headache all around. Another similar mechanic, now transformed into one specifically, is actually for Carlos, and it's a counter or push away mechanic, but with more to it. Instead, Carlos now has an additional follow-up punch mechanic that counters against everything, like zombies, lickers, and even hunters. It's a great move that also slows down time, like the dodge mechanic, and it allows you to run away or fight, like previously stated. stated. The move is super satisfying to execute, both are effective while being great alternatives to get out of intense situations. You'll be utilizing these for the entirety of the game. As for the weapons, you'll get your standard handgun and knife at the start for Jill. As for Carlos, he gets both, but also mainly an assault rifle at his side. That can be also upgradable, like Jill's handgun, shotgun, and magnum. 
Joe also gets a grenade launcher like in the original, with regular grenade rounds, flame rounds, acid rounds, and mine rounds. You also get a burst handgun later as a bonus with Jill after Carlos explores the hospital. The weapons here are cool, and speaking of cool, I have no complaints except for the lack of freeze rounds for the grenade launcher. Freeze rounds were so helpful originally, and they were just great to use. They really were. Even cool. Pun probably intended. In terms of anything else new with gameplay, that's really all I have to talk about aside from the enemies themselves. So, let's talk about them really quickly. The enemies in RE3R are pretty much the same enemies from RE2R consisting of zombies, zombie dogs, lickers, and pale heads from the Ghost Survivor's side content. New enemies consist of Drain Demos, Any Alpha Parasite, Hunter Gammas, and Hunter Betas. As a heads up, here's how they deal with these enemies. Drain Demos are returning spider-like creatures that will actually fill you up with parasites, alien style, which is quite disturbing, and this will require an herb to get rid of those suckers, so if you want those things out of your system, pop an herb because that's your best bet on getting out of that state. Gross. They're easy to kill being spider-like, but be careful of their lunges that will transition into an animation where they will also still fill you up with parasites. Ugh. Any alpha parasites are Lost Plagas-like enemies, or at least inspired like the Lost Plagas parasite, and they are created by Nemesis itself infecting zombies with its own parasite. They can guard their faces and lash at you with their tentacles that are attached to their head. However, the fronts and backs of their heads, which glow by the way, are the weak spots, so be sure to aim for those. And also be sure to dodge those tentacles because it can be kind of tricky, but once you get used to it, it can be a breeze. Hunter Gammas are another hunter variant that returns newly designed and will one-shot you with being eaten alive, like in the original. But it wasn't really more of a one-shot, it was just more of a down-to-danger hell type of situation. I'm just glad I don't have the brutal kill to show you because I did my best to avoid that because it's actually... <sighs> you know what? <sighs> Here you go. Yeah, that's a big no thanks bro from me. That's just absolute brutal. That's so disturbing. Ugh. Their weakness is also quite literally fire, coming from, you guessed it, flame rounds. On standard, this is an easy one-shot move, so you'd be pretty much fine with not being concerned on wasting them. Hunter Betas return from the original also, being horrifying yet badass to fight. Be extremely careful, however, because they have a one-shot move too, where they will slit your throat no matter where your health is at. You can be at fine, caution, or danger. They don't care. So dodge and counter for your own safety. Their weakness on the other hand? Shoot their faces, because it will break through their shielding layer of skin to hit a soft spot when broken. You'll become well accustomed at that point dodging and countering them like nothing, so that will probably become a breeze, but it still can be a bit intense at times depending on how many you're fighting. Yeah, there can be multiple. You'll become well accustomed at that point, so, you know, just kind of shrug it off and go with the flow. Pale heads in RE3R return from RE2R side content, the Ghost Survivors, but here they have a super easy weakness like the Hunter Gammas. Acid rounds are the key to killing these barely killable creatures. When you shoot them with any other weapon, they will slow down slightly, but acid rounds will do the job right and proper. So don't go wasting away your handgun or shotgun or even your magnum bullets on these bastards because, uh, face it, acid is just the way to go for a lot of things. Be considerate, evade maybe, but just be sure to have some on you, okay? Now, I think we're missing a very specific enemy type. One that's not even considered an enemy type, but one that's really iconic and infamous amongst everyone in the community. Or at least almost everyone. One that gets the spotlight in the OG with its very name in the very beginning. Right on the title card itself. Right on the front cover of the game. An enemy known to strike fear into the hearts of classic fans with just a mention of its name. I don't have time to explain. You gotta get out of there right now! Alright, let me grab my... Ah! 
The Nemesis returns as badass and as horrifying as ever. For the first hour and a half to two hours of the game, still within the first hour and a half to two hours of the gameplay, Nemesis is for the most part great aside from Capcom's linearity spell that was casted on the undead brute. And so really, as you might expect, Nemesis operates at the start like how it does in the original. Nemesis will follow or stalk Jill, essentially causing intense chases in the city. If you decide to fight Nimi at points and down him, you'll be classically rewarded with supply crates, and I think that's actually a fine silver lining there, even if it doesn't have some parts that you might think. But here's some advice if you might struggle or waste ammunition on Nemesis. Grenades are a big weakness of Nimi's, so try those for the drops. You get attachments and ammunition in these encounters, but it's limited, so don't think it's an endless amount. Don't waste away with endless downing. It's for your best, okay? Nemesis, in terms of combat, has a variety of moves other than striking fear into your heart, hearing stars, or even the sound of its approaching, running footsteps. I mean, Nemesis will book it at full speed, and it's absolutely horrifying to witness. I mean, jeez, the adrenaline. Ugh. Dodging is essential when it comes to this, so trust me. And here are the moves. Nemesis can punch multiple times, do an overhead ground pound, stomp, leap slide, roar, face punt you into the ground, and even tentacle grab you to pull you in. Be sure to roll out of that one, because if you don't, Nemesis, I believe, will actually stomp you into the ground brutally. The moveset is great with it being more than just punching and lifting all the time like in the original. As for weapons, Nemesis gets two weapons to kill you with, consisting of one new one, actually being the flamethrower and Nimi's signature classic rocket launcher, the one that everyone loves and sometimes hates. <laughs> Flamethrower Demolition Building climb to the boss fight at the very top is one of my favorite moments in the game. It's such a cool sequence and I just love that boss fight. The boss fight that ensues is just probably maybe my favorite fight in the entire game aside from the last one being the final metamorphosis of Nemesis. And it's just... Mwah, it's awesome. <laughs> The rocket launcher chase is good too, dodging rockets left and right, and I mean, yeah, it's just pretty good. 
but all of it sounds great, right? That is until you experience the Nimi Pursuit for a limited amount of gameplay with the weapons Nimi utilizes being set to linear scenarios or sequences. I like the moments, but it's a bit disappointing to experience the rocket launcher and one sequence entirely scripted. Yeah, after the original experience, I actually feel kind of a bit sad, knowing that we will not get the nemesis we were supposed to get from the very start to the very end of the game. Allow me to simply elaborate. Nemesis in the original was a pure menace. The encounters were cool, the chases were intense, the music when the me wasn't around was unnerving, putting you on high alert. The amount of times I was guarding myself for a Nemesis encounter and it never happened was great when Nemesis did appear in seemingly safe moments. The fights were also great too, obviously. OG Nemi is essentially amazing is what I'm trying to say. There's a reason why the original game itself has Nemesis in the name. Now, as for Remake Nemesis, it's still absolutely a powerhouse of a bioweapon. It feels like the original for only a short amount of time though. Nemesis sadly after the opening level of exploration becomes a scripted threat unless there's a boss fight. It feels like such a letdown that the most iconic bioweapon in the entire series, yes I'm including everyone including you Wesker, but seriously in the entire series is an actual enemy attached to action set pieces. It sucks, but what's even more of a letdown is how it goes down later when you supposedly make it to the clock tower. After derailing the subway due to Nemesis and Mikhail's dispute, Get off my train, shit bird! Here we get a great shot of the clock tower and one of the best lines in the series. Then we get this. Nikolai left us to die. Wait, what? What the fuck? It's back! Jill! Jill, what happened? Jill, come in! This is Nemesis, but mutated for adapting to water. Nimi can now swim, Jill. Hope you're happy. Now, I do not hate or even dislike the new look. It's like a Monster Hunter Bloodborne and Xenomorph combination in full effect. It's awesome too knowing Nemesis will mutate to adapt to its own surroundings or environment. It's just great. Just not the timing because we should have received one of my more favorable forms in the entire game originally. had this badass look but because the clock tower was scrapped and to recycle boss fights of course we get aquatic nemesis i like the design i really like it but it's a letdown that this form was not saved for later maybe after familiar form like the one i just showed you that would have been way better anyways after the subway derailing we pretty much get cinematic linear nemesis which is an absolute big letdown as previously stated all because of cut content now, I still love Nemesis in RE3R. I love the look, the design overall. Oh man, the body bag caution tape aesthetic is awesome. Really fitting for the Nemesis, making it feel like a creature to be contained. Don't get it twisted though, because the original is great too. I like the Frankenstein's monster look that they were going for in 99. However, new Nemi is amazing in design, only lacking in gameplay after the first explorable level at the starting point of the game. Also, speaking of cut content earlier, let's leap over to our last part of the overview. The positives and negatives of Resident Evil 3 Remake.
Hey, the easy way. I got you. Who are you? What are you doing? James Carlos. And I'm saving you. Come on. Let's get you someplace safe. Resident Evil 3 Remake is, like I stated before, beautiful missed potential. I like a lot of things about the game, and I dislike a lot of things about the game. I mean, not that many, but, you know, the main obvious ones. Now, as for the pricing, should it have been $60 at the very start? No. Should it have been $40 at the start like it is now? Absolutely, in terms of how minimal the game can feel, even though, debatably, the original is kind of almost the same in length after playing it. I also think, for the sake of not leaving this video on a bittersweet note, I'll talk about the negatives first and the positives last. So let's get started. We have the game's biggest flaw, the cut content, which is really related to creating a good, if not greater amount, if not all of the game's problems. Like Nemesis, for example, as mentioned, RE3R cuts a lot of the original's DNA out of its own reimagining, which hurts it severely. The downtown section is one linear set piece instead of an interconnected level to explore at the beginning. The uptown section is minimized into a decently sized explorable area with no interconnectivity whatsoever to the downtown district. The RPD is saved for Carlos instead of Jill. The clock tower is almost entirely missing, as well as Raccoon Park with the neighboring cemetery home to the great Gravedigger boss fight. What's going on? Whoa! <gasps> The Dead Factory is even cut as well as it was also replaced. What could have possibly replaced the very eerie, ominous Dead Factory? Well, is this something entirely better? Not exactly. It's really not. It's just basically a lesser version of Nest, known as <sighs> Nest 2. Give a big round of applause for Capcom. It's not as interesting feeling sort of lazy really with one specific room being the biggest standout positively i mean the main level itself feels very copy and pasted but this one room is actually really cool jesus is this where they're made these are tyrants As for Nemesis, our brutal bioweapon, like we talked about before, is watered down to super scripted action set pieces in a linear-like fashion after the beginning explorable area. Also, on a very odd note, spiders like in RE2R are missing. Some weapons were even cut too, including the parts for crafting weapons that were dropped from a down Nemesis. I have no idea if a lot of people even like this weapon, but the mine thrower was scrapped too. Even the ammunition type for the gradient launcher, known as freeze rounds, were scrapped like mentioned before. Another cut feature we have are the game-changing actions known as live selections. In 2020, before the game launched at the time of hearing that they cut these, I did not really bat an eye. I did not consider the cut as a red flag because I was so focused on Nemesis and I'd never play the original. Let's just say now, after playing the original, I see why. Because this hurts the replayability a lot. Also, the multiple epilogues are also gone completely, cutting any hope of seeing Barry on the new Reach for the Moon engine. We also missed out on seeing what the entire cast from RE1 to RE3R were up to after the wipe of RC. Even the bonus mode, the mercenaries, got trashed, which is sad because this was its first debut. This was the first debut of the mercenaries mode, and it was just not here. More replayability just axed from this game. Multiple bonus costumes for Jill are out of the question too, aside from her unlockable stars uniform and her classic outfit, which has to be bought with actual money. The same goes for Carlos. Why were the classic costumes priced in the first place? Why couldn't these actually be unlocked like RE2R 
with Leon and Claire. I mean, Carlos doesn't even get a classic costume. It's just the hair swap. The 98 models that were free in RE2R are not even here as 99 models for Jill or Carlos. They even missed out on making the infected Jill or Carlos models as costumes. They were in the game in cinematic glory. Why were they not utilized? Big missed opportunity. Another costume that was missing was Regina's look from Dino Crisis. I mean, I never played Dino Crisis, by the way, but would like to. Although, I get why the entire costume didn't make it. Capcom making Regina look for, you know, Jill Valentine herself would stir the pot of fans of Dino Crisis to beg even more for a new game or remake, which, hey, I don't blame you fans. I'd actually love to see dinosaurs remade on the Reach for the Moon engine. Not you, Exo Primal, not you. But I would love to see Dino Crisis be remade beautifully. A survival horror game with dinosaurs? Let's go. Anyways, to conclude the costumes in one statement, it was a misquandered potential at its finest. As a bonus, there's no classic soundtrack swap either. There, there's, there's not. None. No classic soundtrack swap whatsoever. Completely missed on including the OG sounds and music. I mean, the music you're hearing now in this video is the classic soundtrack. I thought I should probably just throw that in there. A lot of the lacking elements like live selections, multiple epilogues, and costumes affect the replayability. Not only that, but the one thing that gives you the slightest amount of replayability are the added difficulties here in Remake, but let me just say, the last portion of these difficulties are not the best. There's Nightmare and Inferno. For the majority, Nightmare is great. It's a great difficulty. Up until the holdout sequence in the hospital, which... Ugh. I'll get to that in a second. Nimi boss fight number three and number four, being the third and the fourth last ones, are also not that great in this difficulty. The hospital holdout sequence is just not that great. Also, it's just another attempt at RE4's OG cabin fight. I mean, I mean that's cool that you're trying to replicate that. I, well, not really. It, I get why you're doing it because it was so successful and such a cool sequence, but it doesn't work for a lot of these games. And weirdly, RE4 Remake managed to re-embody that and make it even better, so I have no idea why other games are just cursed to not do it as good as RE4, but maybe that's for good reason, because there's so many games, RE5, RE6, RE8, and this, RE3R. So maybe hold off on that. <sighs> Anyways, moving forward, Inferno, on the other hand, is the same as Nightmare, but instead we get less typewriters, and also harder enemies. On one hand, it's a cool difficult change, the other, it's stressful because there's no auto saves whatsoever, leaving you spaced out a lot of the times. The last two bosses, to conclude, are cheap too, and I mean extremely cheap. Nimi gives you, literally, pale heads on its third boss fight, to quote unquote make it difficult, and I'm just... I, I don't get it. It's just, it's infuriating because you have to focus on Nemesis, you have to focus on the Paleheads. I already had to focus on the zombies, but the Paleheads? Are you joking me? Are you joking me? That's practically a mini boss of its own. Especially if I don't have acid rounds. And I'm already trying to shoot my own grenade launcher at Nemesis itself and save my Magnum for the fourth fight because I know the fourth fight is going to be baloney. Ugh. And then Nimi 4, the last fight itself, constantly smacks you into danger, even while on the ground, killing you instantly, literally beating you while you're down. Absolute baloney. I even beat the last boss on Nightmare with no coins, no infinite weapons, and no dodge manual item. It was ridiculous. So, warning for foul language and low quality of this video, or hindered quality, I don't know. Let's just see how it looks, but this is my reaction to beating Nemesis on Nightmare after an hour of so many deaths. Give me this! Give me this freaking fight! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Eat shit, Nemesis! It took me an hour to beat this! Shove it in there! Prepare to die, asshole! Next time, take the fucking hand! You know what? I resonate with that line a bit more. 
after experiencing the bullshit fight that was Nemesis. I'm sorry for my vulgar language. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Good riddance. Yes. Thank you. Nemesis can can go like look at that. I'm all out of ammunition. That was perfect. I didn't even use any. I didn't. The Raiden was useless. The Raiden. I I better get enough to get the infinite rocket launcher. I swear. Game, you better not screw me out of this. I don't even need this. <laughs> I haven't lost my mind. You have. Oh my gosh, this game. Yeah, I had so many fate sprays on my inventory, which were not needed. It took overall an hour of deaths, like I stated, to beat Nimi 4. Ugh, I was so tired. I even beat Infernal recently, too, as I'm making this video. Literal stress. Such a cheap boss fight overall. Especially if you're unequipped with no coins, if not powerful weapons, or both. I did have to buy the two iron defense coins, but, I mean, it just gave me a few hits to really live through. It's cheap. Really, no matter what, no idea how it made it through playtesting. I could get more in depth with it, but we'd be here for over an hour or so. It's just. I mean, if you want to have a try at it, I recommend coins just for your own sanity. Anyways, there's quite the amount of cut here for this remake. Obviously, making highly poorly made boss fights difficult. They're not even difficult in the right ways. Not all elements here are bad, though, I will say that. Not at all, really. It's just the last piece of the game. So I'm not going to be a super negative Nancy for the remainder of this video. Instead of constantly dragging the remake through the mud, I'll be positive with what I like, if not love, about the game itself. So let's definitely talk about the positives of Resident Evil 3 Remake. I'd say the presentation of RE3R is really awesome. You start off with a dope sequence throughout Jill's apartment and venture through a chaotic downtown portion of RC. Sadly, linear, but great in a way. I mean, in the OG, it was kind of weird how Jill is thrusted out of the building through an explosion, so Nemesis being that reason is cool. I know fans are upset by the change because the build-up to Nemesis originally was awesome, with Brad getting killed from the jail at the RPD. but at this point we all know who Nemesis is, so trying to act mysterious about Nimi was probably out of the question for the team, and Nemesis has been in fighting games before. You know, Marvel vs. Capcom, so that's probably very understandable. Either way, we have the OG and the remake, so it's the best of both worlds. We can enjoy both. Now, let's talk about the characters, Jill Valentine and Carlos and the rest of the team. Jill Valentine is my secondary favorite character in Resident Evil. Here in Remake, she's a complete badass, like any other time she's in a video game, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the nemesis, like OG. I love that she has more depth to her, and by depth I mean the fact that she's affected by the Spencer Mansion incident. It's pretty realistic in that way. I mean, she's struggling with sleeping, having to take medication. Too many pills. While having infected nightmares with offing herself as she becomes a zombie. She's paranoid of Umbrella trying to assassinate her, which she isn't wrong, they are, but they do it in the most unsubtle way possible. She's waist deep in an investigation to take them down. She's going through it. She really is struggling at times. 
She still holds on keeping herself in shape though. She still has that OG Jill character to her where she's sassy, but also very realistic in a lot of her interactions. Wait, I have to ask you something. I know, you wanna ask me out. All the foxy ladies love my accent. It drives them crazy. What? Keep dreaming. Tell me, why did Umbrella send your team in? We're here to rescue the civilians. Don't lie to me. Umbrella is the reason why this whole mess began. Look, we're just mercenaries, hired hands. Do you really think the master would tell his dogs why they have to retrieve the stick he just threw? If you want answers, you should talk to someone else. I am not with Umbrella. Believe it or not, we're only here to rescue the civilians. If you can trust me, then help us. Think about it. Listen, I promise you're in good hands. I'm with the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service. UBCS for short. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? You guys are the ones who caused all of this. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about? We're just here to help people. What's wrong with Umbrella? What's wrong with Umbrella? Oh my god. Your company is responsible for infecting everyone. Yeah. I don't know anything about all that. Look, you don't have to trust me, but I'm going to the shelter. You coming? She reacts properly when the moment needs it. Her interactions with characters range from Carlos to Mikolai to Tyrell to Mikhail. Everybody. And even to the nemesis itself. It's all great. Nicole Tompkins, her voice actress and mocap, knocked it out of the park. Awesome job, Nicole. And even if you're not watching this, I still think it's a really awesome performance. I mean, this was technically my first Joe Valentine game, so I really love the experience. It's my turn, bitch! Her name is something Valentine. It's Jill. All right. I'm in. But I am on their side, not yours. All right, super cop. Here you go. We can use this to stay in contact. I know what a radio is. That's a substation. You have to circle around through an alley to your right to get there. You mean the alley that's on fire? Surely a tall drink of water like yourself can put out a few flames. Fuck you. Put it away, please! What the fuck? He was infected. He might have been infected. Can you program that in? Hey, I'm super cop. Consider it done. Come on, you creepy ass stalker. You want stars? I'll give you stars. I'm definitely burning these clothes. Rocket launcher? Really? Carlos is by far the most improved character. I like OG Carlos, yet I have a stronger attachment to new Carlos. I mean, OG Carlos is cheesy and campy and great, but new Carlos has that. He just has that charm to him that the OG has, but also more to it. He acts like Carlos from OG at the start, but transitions towards a more respectable person, realizing Jill isn't some random individual off the street that can't handle herself as easily and cannot be as easily, you know, smooth talked or Carlos talked. She's someone who knows her shit. Carlos realizing that to the point where he even looks at her differently is really great. He just sees her more as a friend and actually goes through with trying to help her. He goes through a lot of extreme points to save her or back her up at times, which is really, really, really awesome. Oh, it's been a while. Subway's got to be clear of the city by now. Along with your hot date. Nah, she's not like that. Hell, she's not like anybody. Oh, is that you? Carlos? You're okay. Let me spot for you. Good idea. What about you? We're running out of time. I've got this. I know you do. The bliss of having Carlos spot for you in the Nimi 3 boss fight, as it was pretty mixed and, you know, how I feel about it, it was such an uplifting moment. He also has a lot of great lines and i mean my man has the lines this isn't the last ride out of town right do not worry once the civilians are safe the train will be back it's all right you're going ahead 
I'm not gonna die on you, leave you in a cold, cruel, Carlosless world. Okay. Now here's a weird fucking door. Leave it. We're here for Bard. Right. Big, warm RPD welcome. I kinda fucked up shooting cops. Well, if cameras killed those things, I'd be set. No voice match found. Voice match? What kind of sci-fi bullshit is this? Open sesame. No voice match found. This is Nathaniel Bard. Open the door, please. No voice match found. Come on, let me in, you piece of shit. No voice match found. He also has the moves. My dude was punching zombies before Chris Redfield was punching bowlers and lichens later in his career. Thank you, Capcom. We really couldn't live without this badass goof. I told you I couldn't leave you in a Carlos's world. That would just be too cruel. We do have a specific character to talk about before the others. The other stars were left in RC, Brad Vickers. Brad is a character some may dislike or hate, but here he's reimagined as someone that can actually acknowledge that he screwed up, that he made a big mistake in the first game, leaving everyone to, I guess you can probably say, die, but even though not everybody did. He actually sacrifices himself for Jill here, making their last encounter sad, more than horrifying where he's killed by Nemesis. No, I know, the change of Brad's fate is decisive, yet I still like it here. And I'm going to sound like Susie here because, yeah, I agree with Susie a lot, but forgive me. Brad is a zombie trying to attack Marvin, only to use his last fleeing part of his humanity to say sorry to a friend is painful to watch, especially what happens afterwards. Sorry. Sorry! Locked. You stay on the door. I got this fucker. All this adds to this right here, this important moment between Marvin and Leon. No. You'll need this. I can't take it. Stop. Him. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. You take it out, or you run. Got it? Yes, sir. It now has a new meaning, making it even more depressing, knowing that it was just between him and a friend, not just some other person. I thought that this was very well connected, very well executed. Other characters get their shine with having improvements like our heroes, Jill and Carlos. Mikhail is such a cool character to the very end. You don't really think a pencil pusher like Martin is still alive, do you? I have it on good authority. Why? Are you worried about teammates? Or something else? Funny how brainless zombies can enter a platoon like that. Funny the gate was locked. Don't you think? How is this fucker not dead yet? Just go. They're gone. Come. This way. Get off my train. Shit! <laughs> 
merda! Tyrell also isn't a one-off character like in the OG version. I mean, look how dirty they did our boy Tyrell. I mean, like, bro was decimated. I had no idea another guinea pig was still alive. What are you doing? Have you lost your mind? Sometimes it's easy to forget one's loyalties. Just like that traitor. You mean the guy who shot you? Yeah, you know him. The one with the gray hair and the ugly mug. I can't believe he had the guts to shoot me. That traitor! You mean Nikolai? Ah! Nikolai is, well, probably the biggest piece of shit in the entire game next to Nathaniel Bard, which... Nathaniel Bard, oh man, you... That son of a gun. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm goddamn Nathaniel Bard! I'm the best biologist you'll ever meet, you bed pen changing waste of a nursing degree. Of course I have connections higher up. Of course the military consults with me on projects beyond your comprehension. So stop wasting my time with your nosy questions. I... Uh, I'm sorry, Doctor. If that's all, you can go back to wiping your patient's ass. That's what they pay you for, right? And polish my shoes. Yes, sir. I bet you know a lot about polishing, don't you? Now fuck off and don't say a word to anyone. You know, Nikolai really rose up to being a villain that I love to hate. Put this man in a 1v1 with Leon or Chris or Jill, coming in with a finishing move maybe from either one of them in a tag team. I want this man reduced to atoms. The hate you feel for the man is a great amount, yet I enjoy his time on screen. He's also played by the talented Neil Newborn who mo cap Nemesis and played Heisenberg in Resident Evil Village. You might even know him as a seductive vampire, so, you know, there's that. Neil kills it though, such a great performance by everyone, and especially himself. Love to hate Nikolai, and that's really all I have to say. You, have you ever seen anything so incredible? The data on this would be worth millions. But, uh, you know how it is. City's about to explode, and you can't put a price on life. <laughs> Good luck! Nikolai! Overall, I'm amped to see the Merc in the remake for Resident Evil 5. Yes, he's alive. There's literally another helicopter in the inn, or Carlos and Jill leave him to die in the blast. If he doesn't take the opportunity, then he's the dumbest man in Resident Evil. I, I don't care what people say about Ethan. This man is probably going to be dumber than Ethan, and I love Ethan Winters. <laughs> Like, seriously, there's another helicopter, Nikolai, if you don't take that helicopter, then I'm going to be really disappointed in you. Or more importantly, the people writing these scripts, the stories themselves. Okay, we covered characters, so let's talk about other great elements about the game. <sighs> Nemesis, like stated previously before, is awesome. For the beginning. The voice, the design, the moves, the intimidation, Nemesis is really the ultimate life form. The, a powerhouse of a bioweapon. So, suck it, Wesker. <laughs> Other details in the game, such as the details of Nemesis, Parasites, even Europe getting mentioned in a document, could lead to interesting theories of an RE4 connection, which was started way back when the game launched in 2020. With context of who worked on Nemesis in RE4R, it makes slightly more sense in a certain way. Maybe not entirely accurate having lost Plagueis in Nemesis system or any actual direct connection, but still a cool theory if the theory is, you know, even that cool for a lot of people. However, nonetheless, I actually think that it could be somehow connected. I even like some of the level designs, such as the Upper Town District being straight out of the 90s in design. It's just awesome. The atmosphere, visuals, including sound design, hearing RC and Chaos as gunfire is heard, and PA systems are just going off, and the music building in, just building up, just kicking the heck out of the speakers is just... Awesome. Just listen to this and look at this.
The amazing music in this remake is a greater player in the gameplay, encounters, and or the cinematics in the game. There's even a cool Resident Evil Outbreak easter egg in the game, and you just might miss it. And it's also part of one of my favorite atmospheric moments in the game, so enjoy. Unit 12. We've located three injured civilians. Transporting to Spencer Memorial now. <sighs> RPD dispatch, this is 153. I'm trapped in North Garden with three civilians. West side, cafeteria, back of the kitchen. One of us is injured and immobilized. Please advise. The details are very present here, we just lack some of the more amazing levels along with various other elements. Now I will say Nemesis and its final form boss fight is awesome, a great fight for standard or hardcore. The build up with final metamorphosis kicking in is epic as Jill wields a railgun. And before you say it's stupid that she could wield something so large that it could shatter her ankles or bones, well, <clears throat> roll the footage. Welcome to Resident Evil, where pretty much everything can make sense and nothing can make sense. That's just how it is. The only negative I have that relates to the final boss is the replacement of the stars line. This, this is a badass moment. I was just, I think I was giddy watching this moment and just hyped up when I was just playing this for this overall review. This was awesome. Now, taking that part only to move it early on in the game where it can be interrupted. Come on, you creepy ass stalker. You want stars? Come on, you creepy ass stalker. You want stars? I'll give you stars. It's such a greatly executed line placed in the wrong spot. I... I like Jill's take the hint line, okay? I know I might be part of the hot takes on that, but I do like it because I resonated with it more after playing Nightmare in Inferno, but really Capcom? Her most iconic line is here to be interrupted. I really think the line could have been better for a different moment. So I'm going to go into kind of a uh, fan theorizing moment or fan concept moment here, so... If you will, please forgive me of this. Maybe you keep the hint line there, without scrapping it whatsoever. But after destroying Nemesis, climbing the ladder, and then making it to that big corridor, everything shakes a bit. A cinematic happens where you see the remaining blob of what appears to be really what is unrecognizable, but it's actually still Nemesis trying to kill you slowly, crawling your way. Then, the screen maybe inverts the colors like it does in the original, giving you a classic on-screen option to either kill the nemesis or go after Nikolai himself. I think this probably would have been really cool because at that point, you could just kill nemesis right then and there with executing the line of stars, the stars line itself. I think that would have been such a satisfying killing blow, giving stars the nemesis for the last time in your own way with the same gun too. Ugh. It could have worked. However, the game is polished and published, so I can't complain, I can't change it. There's no change in the game, unless a certain Wishful Thinking Edition launches, completing the game itself, but that's probably not gonna happen, sadly. So I'm not gonna throw any more negativity in. It was just a certain what if idea. Resident Evil 3 Remake is definitely not a bad game. In fact, it was one of the few games of 2020 to distract myself from the bleakness of the world at the time. A game based on biohazards distracts you from the pandemic, I know, yeah. It's a bit of a ridiculous kind of concept, but considering the intro and the premise of the game, 
I can understand a lot of why people would probably think that. I mean, this was pretty ominous when this game launched, when we were almost, or if not in the height of the pandemic. Yeah, kind of crazy, but it's an established fiction, so it can help itself. It still helped as a game, though, that I never really harshly critic or critiqued at the time. It was a pleasant experience. I played around my birthday with Resident Evil 3 Remake, so that was a bonus too, that was a plus. RE3R at the end of the day is flawed as a remake, yet great as a game. <sighs> I like it a lot. I do. I don't dislike it, I don't hate it. Could it have been better? Yes, entirely, it could have been way better, but that's really only as a remake and potentially as a game to a certain extent. And I may not entirely love it on one hand, but I still love some of what it offers you, the player, to experience. As it could be most likely improved, we could at the very least probably not even received the remake at all. We could have actually got the DLC edition of this game probably. We we could have had it way worse than what it is. So I think maybe not take this game entirely for granted. We can acknowledge it's flawed. We can acknowledge it's not the greatest of remakes, probably really if anything a bad remake, but it's a great Resident Evil game. So as it could be improved, we at very least have the remake for the third entry. And that's all I really have to say for Resident Evil 3 Remake itself. It's better than no remake whatsoever. RE3R is a piece of missed potential that sometimes brims with beauty. I decided then and there, the ashes of Raccoon City would be Umbrella's ashes too. I would end them once and for all. <laughs>